This is the new way we work from Fast Company Magazine, where we take listeners on a journey through the changing landscape of our work lives and explain exactly what we need to build the future we want. I'm Fast Company Deputy Editor, Kate Davis. Season 10 of The New Way We Work starts with new episodes in February, but in the meantime, there will still be new content in this feed each week, starting with this conversation I had earlier this month with Fast Company editors Lydia Dishman and AJ Hess about the right and wrong ways to set goals and why so many people make New Year's resolutions, yet so few people follow through. Take a listen. Hello, and welcome to Fast Company's first LinkedIn audio event of 2023. I am Kate Davis. I'm a deputy editor at Fast Company, and I'm also the host of Fast Company's podcast, The New Way We Work. I am joined with AJ Hess, who's a staff editor for our work life section, and Lydia Dishman, who is our senior editor for growth and engagement. Hi, Lydia and AJ. Thanks for joining me. Hello. Hi, thanks for having us. Happy New Year. (laughs) (laughs) We can still say that. Yes, exactly. Well, you can say it for the whole month of January, I think. So it's the second week of January, and by now, uh, many people are have likely to have already dropped their New Year's resolutions. In fact, while about half of people make some kind of New Year's resolution, only 8% follow through on the goals that they set in January. Uh, as you both know, New Year's resolutions and goal setting are incredibly popular topics on Fast Company, especially this time of year. And we have a huge archive of articles around these topics uh, that we'll share throughout the chat today. So the question is really, what's the right way to set goals? How do you keep your New Year's resolutions? And what are the common mistakes that people make? So first, before we get into like all of our vast archive of knowledge around this, Lydia and AJ, do you make New Year's resolutions and do you stick to them? I do not make New Year's resolutions simply because I don't like to be pinned into turning that count cal- that particular calendar page. And I'm going to go a little corny here. I remember that there was a motivational poster in one of my classrooms back in the day that was today is the first day of the rest of your life. And being the resolute optimist that I am, I like to think that each day is an opportunity to set new goals and not necessarily resolutions. So I sort of have a rotating list of goals that I try to hit all throughout the year, but not one big thing that I resolve to do on January 1st. That's spoken like a true expert who's been covering this a lot because that's actually (laughs) some of those like setting smaller goals throughout the year doesn't have to be January 1st. Some of those things are are some things that we're going to get into because those are really good guidelines to, yeah, I think a lot of people are like, oh, it's January 1st. And so now I have to do this. Like, guys, it's just a made up day. (laughs) You can do it any day. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Time is fake. (laughs) <laughs> and while Lydia may represent kind of the best of these behaviors, I think I often represent some of the the least productive uh, resolution setting habits. I, you know, you're I'll, like you know, become a better person. Like those, yeah, like, I'm like I'm gonna run a marathon. I'm yeah. gonna, you know, drink five bottles of water a day, right? Um, and I, I can say, uh, you know, I set some goals that I've already uh, kind of uh, fallen off of. I said you know, day one, I'm going to delete TikTok. And here we are day 10. I haven't deleted it yet. So um, while I'm definitely (laughs) using it less, uh, I'm definitely among the group of people who have seen firsthand how their resolutions don't uh, always, aren't always followed through on. You really are kind of the classic example, right? There's a lot of like spirit around, like, I'm going to make this, this big change. I myself am no surprise a dedicated list maker of all sorts. And so, of course, given <laughs> given the excuse and opportunity, I will make a New Year's resolution. I told a story uh, a while ago of when I was a kid, I used to force my mom and my brother to make New Year's resolutions too. <laughs> and I would suggest them. Oh. Like to my brother, I'm like, be nicer to your sister. <laughs> <laughs> We'll file that in the, like, things not to do category. Do not force resolutions on other people. So we did a couple of polls on LinkedIn leading up to this. And one was um, why, you know, if you don't stick to your New Year's resolutions, how come? 
And it was pretty split. Um, Some people, like 22% said they forgot about them. 27% said they don't have enough time. 36% said they changed their mind about them. I think a lot of that is all like that whole, I'm going to do this. And then like you just lose momentum because maybe it's like too, you bite off more than you can chew. So here are kind of some ways to reframe your thinking around New Year's resolutions and making the change more lasting. And we've, we've touched on it a little bit already. The idea of like setting small goals throughout the year. So kind of what it sounds like you do, Lydia. So instead of attempting a big like sweeping reform, you'll usually be more successful if you commit to like modest, measurable improvements that might be achieved and maintained over time. And that doesn't mean that you can't like run a marathon or like set a big goal. You just take it and you break it into kind of smaller milestones and you consider like setting those smaller goals throughout the year. So it's not like, I set this goal on January 1st, and by December 31st, I will have done it. It's I break this goal into smaller things, and I have check-ins on in February and March. I keep like coming back to it and checking in on it and remembering it. Um, and the other thing that I kind of related that I recently read that I really liked about this kind of idea of like smaller changes is um, Anne Friedman's newsletter last week. She talked about turning up and turning down. So instead of like thinking about like what big goal should I have, you look at the things that you're already doing and what thing do you want to do a little bit more of, devote a little bit more time to, and what do you want to do a little less of and, you know, cut out. So AJ, if it's like you spend too much time on social media, maybe it's like setting a a timer or something of like, I will only let myself waste 15 minutes a day on TikTok or something. So it's like, you know, a little less of this. I'm exercising you know, two days a week, I'm going to add in another day or I'm going to add in another few minutes or whatever. So it's like small adjustments seem a lot more obtainable. Yeah, no, I completely Um, agree. But I mean, also, it's not that hard to delete that app. You can just like, you know, (laughs) delete it. How many seconds does it take to delete an app? Exactly. That's a very small change you can make. AJ, what you you had some ideas on, on what else we can do. Yeah, I mean, I think just one tool that I have found helpful in recentering some of these resolution practices is is reminding yourself why you want to make the change in the beginning. And I think that can also help with setting those resolutions in the first place. So for instance, um, if your goal is to stop smoking in the new year, you would remind yourself that, you know, maybe I'm doing this so I can play softball with my kids without getting winded. Or maybe it's I'm getting healthy so I can be alive for my kids when they're older, right? Um, I think that's a really good way to ground them. My favorite one when setting um, exercise goals, I know one thing my mom said to me when I was younger was the reason why you know you want to exercise is because you may want to be able to put your your luggage in the overhead compartment by yourself one day. <laughs> Practical, yes. <laughs> you know, she was raising two young girls. I, I think I really loved that advice. But um, I think, you know, so often we can get caught up in kind of superficial reasons why we're setting these resolutions, but figuring out exactly why you want to do them, I think is probably a more healthy and more sustainable way to look at these goals. Totally. Cause it's, well, it's also, I think people make resolutions because it's like, oh, I should like lose 15 Mm -hmm. pounds because like, that's what I should do. Like if you don't actually want to lose 15 pounds or have a reason, a good reason to lose 15 pounds, then one, you're not going to stick with it Two, you're, and you're not going to feel very motivated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that um, just to build on what both of you are saying, it's important to recognize what we're doing for ourselves versus what is motivated like extrinsically or doing things for others, Um, especially when we're talking about something addictive like, you know, smoking or or drinking, because I know a lot of people are doing dry January right now. It's best to focus on what the benefit is to you if you are going to personally feel better. I had spoken to a clinical psychologist um, a while back who worked at an addiction treatment center, and she said that those who professed to getting clean for their kids or for their significant other, while it was admirable, it didn't guarantee success. You have to want to do these things for yourself first, and you really have to examine the motivation for why you want to do those things. Once you find the why, it's easier to kind of keep pace with that goal. And like keep reminding yourself of that why too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Lydia, you had, you have lots of ideas, but give give us (laughs) one of how to keep your New Year's resolutions, how to stick to your goals, what we're doing wrong, what what we need to do right. I do think that, you know, if you want to take this 
moment, if you will, this January moment where you have some time to reflect, perhaps like especially after the whole holiday rush and blur, there could be maybe building in five to 10 minutes a day for some self-reflection. Think about how your day went and think about, as you were quoting from Ann Friedman's newsletter, what do you want to do more of and what do you want to do less of? If you just assess your to-do list and feel bad because you did only five of the 10 things on there, that's not terribly helpful. But if you look at the five things that you did do and say, okay, well, this I really felt terrific once I completed it, and then break out, why did that make you feel so good? And then you can figure out what you need to do more of. I mean, it's hard to start with a blank page, so I think a to-do list is a really good place to start and just spend some time thinking about what really motivates you, what makes you feel good when you accomplish it versus things that, you know, are just kind of a drag and you have to do them, like, you know, laundry for some people who are not motivated by clean clothes. I know I am, but I, <laughs> I'm probably in the minority for loving to do laundry. Yeah, that I mean, but that is like you, it can all be like, th you know, some things you just have to do and you can't, you know, resolution them away. But yeah, they still need to be done. And on the vein of to do lists, I'm a huge to do list evangelist. And I think we can also think about them systemically, right? So you can think about my resolution is to make a to do list every day. And I think may, putting in those types of structures can actually be one of the most powerful things that you can do in terms of a New Year's resolution because it gives you structure every day towards uh, working towards those things. And listen, I put laundry on my to-do list just so I have something to cross off, right? I'm like, <laughs> no, the, oh, no, the good. key is to put make to-do list on the top of your to-do list. Yes, to -do list. exactly, right? I put morning cup of coffee on my to-do list every day <laughs> because I'm going to do it anyway. And then I've got the first thing checked off. Yeah, that's good. That's a good motivator. I think we should totally do a, a LinkedIn audio about to-do lists. I think we did I did a podcast episode like years and years ago about it. And we've written about it a lot. Like there's so many effective ways and ineffective ways to do it. And, you know, there was that trend mm -hmm. uh, years ago. I think this is when we maybe covered it on the podcast with the whole bullet journals, which just seemed like yeah. more. Yeah. And, you know, they were very like Instagrammable and everything, but they seemed like more work than they were worth. But like people get super involved in it. But yeah, there's simple and effective ways to kind of like remind you of tasks and, and the best way to, to go about it. So my next kind of New Year's resolution tip the, of from our past coverage is like creating a plan to deal with temptation, but also setbacks. So Gretchen author, uh, Gretchen Rubin, she's, you know, quite famous and popular. She's written several books. She wrote for us uh, a couple years ago about the what she calls the what the hell phenomenon, which is when <laughs> you have a minor stumble, which you will like, you know, I see. Well, here's the other thing. As we said, resolutions don't always have to start in January, but I had a kind of a resolution, a goal to like write more. And so I would uh, write for 20 minutes a day and every single day. Like it was right for 20 minutes every single day. Well, this, what the hell phenomenon is you're sick or you're, something happens and you don't do it for one day. Mm -hmm. And so then you're like, well, well, I broke it. What the hell? It's done. I didn't meet my goal. And that happens all the time. The same thing with, you know, your exercise goals, you're like, whatever you're drinking, you drank one day, you know, you're going to have a dry January and you went out for drinks. Oh, well, now I'm not having a dry January anymore. I broke my streak. Like, Making, if you know that that's going to happen because you're human and things happen and you break and you make in a plan for when the little stumble happens, she said, so Gretchen Rubin said, like, make sure that a stumble doesn't turn into a fall. So you know that you have a plan and when, and when the like stumble happens, you go right, you know, you pick right up back and you don't like kind of let yourself say what the hell. <laughs> I really like that. It also reminds me of you know, building flexibility into these. Um, yeah. and, and it got me thinking about, you know, looking back to that that first poll, right? What, what were the reasons that people were dropping their resolutions? And one of the first ones, one of the biggest ones being um, uh, because they changed their mind, right? And, and so I think your resolution can change as the year grows, right? Um, and I think giving yourself that freedom and flexibility to tailor your resolutions for your own life and how it changes is, is really powerful. And another thing this reminds me of is just making sure that you're setting realistic, 
goals that you actually care about in the long run. And, and this sometimes requires some foundational work. One tool that I've done to figure out what I actually want to accomplish in the year ahead is writing a letter to 2022 version of myself from the perspective of the end of 2023, AJ. Oh my God, I do the same thing. <laughs> do you really? Yeah. yeah. So, and, and the top of my one this year was like, dear 2022 AJ, like, I'm so proud of you. Like this year you made really good decisions. And like, I know that's really cheesy and like, you know, kind no, of. No, that's okay. Kumbaya oh way to look about it. But like, I'll probably make some good decisions, hopefully, and, uh, uh, you know? Um, yeah, see, and you hedged your bets because you didn't say you made nothing but good decisions. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think also that allows me to, you know, make sure I'm staying true to myself and who I want to be without really, like, narrowing myself in too much. Is your letter to yourself then more realistic or do you do you swing for the fences a little bit? Like, I try to use it as, like, a motivational tool, but I think, and, and like, I, you know, not... Like kind of manifesting what I want to happen, but it never, I, I do it with the knowledge that it'll never be fully true. I always like end the letter like, this was your best year ever. <laughs> like, I'm just like, <laughs> um, yeah, I think I have the end of mine this year is you did a great job this year, which. Oh, you know, so you're wow. very encouraging to uh, yourself. Yeah, I think it, I think that's kind of w what I'm looking for. And then I also put in some, you know, logistical things like I have, you know, I'm going to say one thing I'm thankful for every day I have, I'm going to stretch every night. The first thing I do in the morning is going to be drink a glass of water. So there are some kind of logistical things in there too. But um, I feel like the the emotional fluffy stuff is is kind of what powers me through on, on the more logistical ones. Yeah. I definitely like don't take all of the advice that we're talking about when I write the letter to yeah. myself. It is definitely a more like <laughs> manifesting, like you got a book deal, you are, you yeah. did this, uh -huh. like you traveled to all these <laughs> countries. And then when I read it back the next year, I'm like, well, if I did a couple of them, then that's something, you know, I think that's kind of it too, right? Of like, not thinking of yourself as a failure if you didn't do everything. Like if you did, yeah. you know, kind of like what you were just saying, like you did a good job. You tried. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, I, I think that along with that flexibility is to have the perspective of balance too. It's never all or nothing with things like this. It doesn't have to be a windfall. It could be a little win. And that's a great way to continue to have it power you to manifest large goals. You need to think of the small things that you've achieved as wins so that you're continuing to stay motivated and to stay on your own side. I think that that inner voice that's lying to you as we've just published sometimes can trick us into feeling bad about what we don't accomplish. But the gratitude thing is, is really terrific. I love that, AJ. And I also think that it's important to not do the whole self-flagellation thing, that it, you really do need to have some balanced perspective with your own accomplishments. And I know that, that it's easier said than done, but that is a small and achievable goal if you take it just one day at a time. Just look at that to-do list, see what you've accomplished. If it is only making the cup of coffee and drinking the water first thing, those are small wins. Well, if you made a good choice that day for something else, then awesome. I think that um, reframing and it, with a balanced perspective is really helpful because just beating yourself up about what you have not accomplished, there are better ways to spend your energy. Let's just put it that way. We're all guilty of it, right? Like we're our own harshest critics. But, you know, mm -hmm. one thing that I try to think is like, I would never talk to someone or about someone else the way I talk about myself, you know, yes, yes, like yes. the mean things yeah. I think about myself, I would never say to somebody else. And when you do make mistakes, like how would you approach somebody else that makes a mistake? You know, if you're a manager and you have an employee who, you know, didn't meet their goals, you wouldn't be like, you're such an idiot. You're always failing. <laughs> you're, no, you know, it's like you're, we're being the like world's worst bosses to ourselves. Truly. Yeah, totally. Totally. And I think that, you know, we've written a lot about psychological safety. And I think that the thing that a lot of this pontificating on psychological safety misses is that it really starts within yourself. You have to grant yourself the permission to have that safe space 
to make those mistakes, to not meet those goals every single day, and allow yourself the grace and patience to try again tomorrow. One thing that I always think too is like nobody is ever thinking about you as much as you are thinking about yourself. Oh, amen. <laughs> you know, like so true. So many times where I'm like, oh, I really put my foot in my mouth in that meeting or I yeah. sounded stupid or whatever. Yeah. Like nobody else even nobody remembers cares. what you yeah. said. <laughs> you know, yeah. And in that vein, I think um, I think it's always really important to set resolutions that are based off your own actions, right? Like I know people mm-hmm. will put like, get a promotion in the new year, right? Which maybe there are things you can do to get yourself, you know, uh, improve your career or do really well at work. But ultimately, sometimes things aren't in your control, right? Um, Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. I think while it's always good to have those goals and work towards them, um, making sure your personal resolutions are things that you can actually do yourself. Yeah, for sure. I mean, exactly. Like, especially, you know, this year, getting a promotion might be totally, you know, out of your hands as far as, you know, business reasons and everything. Like, you can only do what you can do, right? Mm -hmm. One thing I thought about when you were talking about kind of like reframing and, and like being kinder to yourself, Lydia, is the advice that we've given in many different ways when it comes to like job preparation and wanting to get a promotion, like all of those things, which is keeping a praise document. So literally just a word document that has when somebody says something nice to you about your work, when you get praised for whatever, if you know, big or small, and then like looking at that. And like, and I think you can kind of do that too with accomplishments, right? Because we just, we just got through December where every journalist in the world is doing roundup stories and look back stories. (laughs) And it's so hard to remember what happened, you know, a month ago, let alone 12 months ago. And especially, you know, this is really, really helpful if you're, if you're trying to get a promotion, if you're, you know, doing performance reviews of just keeping, you know, we've been talking a lot about to-do lists, but like a done list, a like, I did this, Mm -hmm. I got this accomplished. So I would really encourage like the two kind of running docs, one of the praise you get to like make you feel better about yourself and as also ammunition tools for job growth. And then to the, the, I did it (laughs) done accomplishment, you know, list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it would also help you on the days where you feel like you didn't do well, Mm -hmm. that everything just went wrong or sideways and whether it was in your control or not. And if you feel in low, that's a good time to revisit the nice things that people said about you and the goals that you have achieved. And also that makes me now think, that a great New Year's resolution that I'm going to just assign for everybody is if I have that power (laughs) is to like say the nice thing that you're thinking. Yes. Yeah. You know, and I've thought that several times of, you know, throughout the last couple of years is like, don't keep the nice thing to yourself. Like just say the nice Mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I have a a friend who always says that you you deserve a, a, a little treat every day. Right. Like every time you walk, you think, oh, that'd be a nice little tree. He's like, once a day, you have to do it. Yeah, just do it. That goes well with, you know, something I think in this was like born out of the pandemic of, you know, like life is short. Don't wait to do things is the whole idea of what are we saving things for? So it, it was used in the like very simple context of like saving the nice dishes for the nice occasion. Like, why don't you just eat off the nice dishes on a Wednesday and like feel and use and have nice things around yourself. But yeah, like the kind of not waiting. Yeah, little special things. I also, I don't remember exactly where it came from. So forgive me if you're out there listening and it is, this is your idea. But <laughs> that Lydia is stealing. When you, yes. um, when you change your password, make it something that you are wanting to manifest. And you have to change certain passwords like on a regular basis. So you're able to kind of update them. But every time you put it in, you're giving a little extra juice to that vision or that goal that you have. And for me, I'm planning a rather significant trip towards the end of this year. And so every time I type in the name of where I would like to go, I feel like, okay, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to make this happen. And today maybe I'll save like, 10 extra dollars and, you know, have that money for when I take my trip or start reading up about X, Y, Z thing that I want to see. And so that kind of gives me a little bit of juice to keep going. Yeah. That's an easy reminder that you have to, cause that's the thing you have to type those things in <laughs> so many times. I know exactly. So you might as well make it useful. 
and happy too. Well, I have another um, keep your resolutions tip that we have written about a lot. And we also, um, on one of the most recent episodes of um, all the Fast Company podcasts, we we had all of our, our hosts together talking. And Casey Afini, who's the host of uh, the Creative Control podcast, he said that his uh, New Year's resolution was to do one creative thing a day. So, right, that's one that you could definitely slip on one day and then be like, oh, what the hell, I, I missed it. Um, one thing that he said that he's doing, which is, you know, very um, consistent advice that we've given in a lot of our articles, is to have an accountability partner and or to make mm-hmm. yourself accountable mm-hmm. in some larger way. So he made himself accountable by posting about it on Instagram, like being very public about posting about that he has this goal. Also, I've, I've you've seen a lot of the advice of just like having a buddy, like having an accountability buddy where you like check in with each other regularly. So you have to keep yourself on track. I think that's one thing that a lot of people fail at their New Year's resolutions because they, you know, as we said, like write them and then just forget they totally exist. Mm -hmm. I really like that. Do you have a New Year's resolution that you've made in the past that you've kept? I mean, if I did, it was probably so long ago, I don't remember, <laughs> because I, I quit doing that like a very long time ago. So AJ, this is all you with your with your to-do lists and such. Yeah, I mean, I am. Um, so I was a I was a college athlete. I played soccer. And, and when I uh, graduated and all of a sudden didn't have soccer in my life, I made the resolution to never let anyone force me to exercise again, uh, mm-hmm. which is a bit of an anti-resolution. But what it meant was that I reapproached exercise in a way that actually made me feel happy, uh, right? So now it's like I can exercise when I want. I've set other ones where I'm like, oh, I'm going to exercise every day or or three times a week. But the one that has stuck is that no one's ever going to force me to to exercise uh, one way or another ever again. Well, next time I walk by your desk, I'm going to say drop and give me 20. Yeah, I can. Uh, <laughs> not to brag, but I could do it if you needed me to. Uh, One-handed. <laughs> We can add some claps in there, too. That goes back to, like, who are you doing it for and by doing things for yourself and not being outwardly, you know, motivated and you're not going to stick to something if if you're doing it for someone else necessarily. Yeah, exactly. What were you going to say, Lydia? Just with the exercise thing, because I know that it is on a lot of people's minds at the beginning of the year, hence the, you know, gym membership swelling. um, And which, which gym are closed down because they were refusing to take applications on January 1st. I thought that was kind of a clever idea. It's literally every, I'm a member of the Y, and it's like every year for the first two weeks of the year, all of the classes are packed, everything's packed, and then it just goes away (laughs) by February. Yeah, totally. The tide goes out. I just feel like, and this is something that I learned when I was working remotely in the before times, that... I could do a little something while I was doing something else. So for example, if I had a phone call that I was just listening in on, then, I mean, I used to dance for many years, so I could do some bar exercises while I was listening on a call. And I actually found that I could retain things better. And that's just the kind of like learner that I am, that I I need to be moving around while I'm absorbing information. And so um, I just had a spot in my home office that I could stand in and just do like not stuff that would get me winded, but 10, 15, 20 minutes sometimes. And that was my exercise for the day. And, you know, was I going to get like totally ripped doing this? Absolutely not. But it just kind of kept me moving and it made me feel good. So and I was, you know, had the added bonus of being able to retain the information. So bonus points. Yeah. Then that's, well, that's, you know, something that a, a lot of people talked about at the beginning of the pandemic too, is like taking w- like walking meetings and, you know, like that sort of thing of like, yeah, exactly. Trying to, because I think that's the thing too, about all of these setting these goals is like, when the hell am I going to do it? I don't think there's anybody that's like, you know what? I have too much of time. I have too much time on my hands. (laughs) It's like nobody feels like they have enough time. So making that's why I'm a big fan of setting timers for things. I mean, one, it's really great for focus, like making myself I'm going to 
heads down editing or heads down writing for the next half an hour. I set a timer. I'm not going to respond to any of the pings and dings. I'm just going to like do this. But it also mm-hmm. works, I mm-hmm. think, for like, I'm going to exercise, but it sounds really impossible to find an hour to exercise. So what I'm actually going to do is like walk for 15 minutes while on a call or something like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, unless anybody else has some great advice, I think we'll probably wrap it up there. We're going to be keeping this up and doing LinkedIn audios about once a month um, with some combination of of Fast Company editors. Um, if you want more of this type of goal setting and New Year's resolutions and to-do list making and all of this sort of content, we have so, so much of it on fastcompany.com. Um, also, shameless plug for The New Way We Work, where we talk about all things future of work. Um, you can get that anywhere you get your podcasts on uh, every Monday. So AJ and Lydia, thank you so much for joining me and happy new year. Thank you, Kate. It was great to be here. Thanks so much. Happy new year, everyone. And that's all for this episode. If you're a new listener, be sure to subscribe to The New Way We Work wherever you listen. And if you like this episode, leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. The New Way We Work is produced by Joshua Christensen with editing by Nicholas Torres. (music) 